Gold Coast had a day out at the expense of Hawthorne. We will talk about Gold Coast and the emerging team that it is. But what, what's going on with Hawthorne? Yeah, well, I've been a big defender of the Hawks, but I'm starting to get a little bit worried now. Uh -oh. because this was, this was a disaster for them. Now, I just think Sam Mitchell's been in such control. He's been in the coach's box and he's been composed. I, I thought it was a different Sam Mitchell. You feel like the pressure is getting to him. Like This, this sort of stuff really animated on the bench. I haven't seen from him and I just thought well, that, that's a change in demeanour for Sam Mitchell and clearly it's a high pressure job but I felt like last night against a team who wasn't in the eight last year and who they should be really competitive against I thought they were smashed their midfield Newcomb, Ward, Warple, Nash, McKenzie hardly touched the football a hundred less disposals than Gold Coast and after the match Sam Mitchell TJ was pretty honest about the performance yeah well let's roll the grab we can't play AFL football against aspiring finals teams and cough up the ball the way we did, lose contests the way we did, you're just not going to be able to compete against against anyone the way we played tonight. And that's just completely unacceptable way to play and we should be past games like that. Mm. Uh, it does sound defeatist, doesn't it? Um, what, what, do you have a knock on him being on the boundary? Because I found that fascinating. I found that good, old-fashioned coaching. Yeah, and that's what some coaches do. But when you change the way that you're coaching mid-year or not even, like after four games, it's different. He's been a big one for seeing the game from the coach's box, really been consultative with assistant coaches. Now to see that and the frustration come out on the bench, it, it's just a change that I've seen and noticed. And perhaps he's just feeling the pressure. That's what it looked like to me. Okay, you've been really defensive yeah. of him and the footy club. You've actually called him on multiple occasions on this show, on Monday Footy Classified, a genius. And you've been doing that since 2022. Do you take that back? I don't take it back. I think he's going to be, and he is, an excellent coach. But I'm starting to get a little bit worried about them. So you get new information and your opinions change. Last week, they probably should have won that game um, with McDonald having a shot against Collingwood. But what's, at home. what's been genius about it? Well, well, genius is what he's been able to do. I don't see genius. The, I just see a club that's actually to, going backwards. Yeah, but the, what he's been able to do and what he did last year and the wins they won that he seven had, games, can't Yeah, I know, and but they, they lost they, games but, by but an average of 10 goals. Compare that to teams like North Melbourne with the access that they have had to the draft that Hawthorne haven't and the style of football they're playing. They lost a number of games by you know, under 10 points last year. They're highly competitive against. Will they beat Collingwood? They, they beat finished the third last. I understand that, but they had a massive clean out. They got rid of all their experience. They went young and they started to rebuild with not a lot of assets. Like They haven't had the first round picks that But these North are the decisions by choice too. That They cleared out players who, I understand, didn't have a long-term future at Hawthorne, mm. but they would have helped some younger players. Yeah, they would have helped at that time, but would it have helped into the future? But to answer your question, I'm, I'm starting to question just when they lose a couple with the injury front mm. is there anything behind is them? Is he changing his game plan from week to week too much? Uh, but maybe and, and are the players too reactive to the instruction which can happen with a young group so the example against Melbourne where the high and contested didn't go anywhere they overreacted to that but my concern is the midfield like why they were is a high possession side last year yeah why is Newcomb who was looked like mm. could be anything all Australians got one good game year, this year Ward is a high draft pick Warpool's been in good form, but you take him out of it. Nash is a player who's highly regarded. McKenzie's a high draft pick. Day not, being out injured is not helping, that's, clearly. That's yeah. hurt as well, and a, a few others. Like Mitch Lewis is not there. Bruce is not there. Blank's not there. So there's significant excuses for them, but that was a, a, a significant step back yesterday, TJ. I tell you what it does do is sets up a tantalising showdown next Sunday. North Melbourne and Hawthorne. Who wins that, TJ? Come on, put it on the line. Well, it's, it's, it's Sam Mitchell versus Alistair Clarkson. Yeah, and yeah. Mitchell got the better of him last year early on in the season. They just oh, I'm backing Sam Mitchell because he's got some real mongrel in him now. <laughs> oh, no, I like and that. And Clarko doesn't? <laughs> no, 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 butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. <laughs> no, but I, I love that. I love that from Sam Mitchell. I hear what you're saying, but if it's not working, then why not change course? He just course? looked a bit defeated. Like, even after the game, he looked tired and fatigued. No, I, I thought he looked, really, in, I thought really he looked invested on the bench. Yeah. You don't look upset when you lose, though. No, 100%, yeah, 100%, mm. but it's been a, a significant change in the way that he's gone about it.